All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome to something that I haven't done in quite a few months. Because <laughs> uh, unlike the uh, gaming stuff I do, you can actually see the uh, date and time that it currently is. And if you compare that to the previous episode of of this well, specifically this fanfiction reading, it was exactly six months and ten days ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, I'm sorry if I remember nothing from this, which kind of sucks, but yeah, welcome back. Um, this is at least for me, I guess. Welcome back to maybe more regular uploading. Who actually knows? We can we can only hope that I that I not only can possibly upload more regularly, but actually get going on the things that I need to need to do at this moment. And not just sit around and do a whole lot of nothing, which is what I've been doing for the past couple weeks and then months before that. So yeah, uh, I don't even, I don't remember a lot of things. <sighs> what I should have done was, was looked at what I had read before, but I didn't because I'm terrible. <laughs> and hopefully you can hear me well enough because it's too, too goddamn hot outside and I don't want to use the air conditioning too much so there's a fan in the background although it'll probably be worse when I do some of my gaming videos soon enough because then I might have to have my fan boost on my laptop which would make it even louder <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that um, so yeah uh, uh, this is life isn't a fairy tale by Adam Grayson Chapter 7, we did chapters 1 through 3 in the first episode, and chapters 4 through 7, or 4 through 6, I can't count, in the second episode. I assume that's how it went. I hope so. Um, and we have quite a few chapters left to go, so it should be interesting. And I think, yeah, it looks like I haven't read any of these other stories up here, so, you know... <laughs> Can see what's coming up, I guess, because I, I don't really got anything else. I'm pretty sure I had, I probably had these up in the last episode, which means that these, these tabs have been continuously open for, for, uh, for six months. Not me doing anything. Oh my goodness. I need to get my shit together. Anyways, let us begin with chapter 7, the, uh, I assume another unnamed chapter. Again, I don't remember, and I'm a terrible person for not remembering. Ospin sipped his cup before looking at the remaining members of Team Ruby. They were hurting. It was clear on their faces, and he understood why, but he had to hear from them what happened. Juniper arrived shortly after, after to find them on the ground, unconscious, and the white fang inside the SDC. Unfortunately, almost half the staff had been killed by the explosions or by the white fang. Juniper managed to save the surviving members, but Neo got away. Uh, in front of Ospin's desk stood Ruby... That's not confusing at all. Ruby in the middle, with Weiss on her left and Blake to her right. All three were hurting, mostly from the emotional pain rather than the bruises Ruby and Blake suffered. Blake and Weiss were confused at Yang's words. Neither could make heads or tails of what was happening. Even even the slightest grammar problems just, like, stop me in my tracks. Uh, Osborne cleared his throat, getting the girl's attention. I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry to have to bring you up here so soon. I know we usually give more time than a day when something like this comes up, but it's important that I know what happened. Miss Rose, can you tell me what happened? Ruby wasn't sure she could get through the story without tearing up, but she nodded. Yang said her concussion wasn't any better, so he left her in the dorm. 
we went to guard the building and wife spotted figures in the distance. The building exploded in various places. I was hit with some rubble and when I came to, Weiss was facing down Torchwick. Neo and a few white fangoons? That was not meant to be a question. Blake and I got there and Torchwick said he was going to kill Yang if we didn't let the white fang go in. It was my decision to let them go in. Those lives are on my head. Blake tried to talk me out of it. Don't blame her or Weiss. Ruby shook the guilt aside to get on with the story. He let Yang go, but she attacked us. I saw her closing in on Weiss, and I just reacted. She threw me in it, into Blake, and I blacked out. I don't know what happened after, afterwards, oh Jesus, or what happened while I was down before. So I do sort of remember this. Um, obviously, you probably remember this because you know the video was just like a week or two ago. If you just, well, I, I don't know. Or if you just watched it, like, a few minutes ago. Well, yeah, they were supposed to be... Uh, there's been a lot of fights with the White Fang, which have been significantly more powerful than they were in, in actual Ruby. Um, so Yang got injured, and then she was left behind. They were supposed to protect the Shni Dust Company. I guess one of the offshoots of it, probably. And apparently Yang got... He got, like, we don't know the word, I completely forgot. He got, like, hypnotized or whatever. And, yeah, things happened. Everybody got beat up. Which is probably going to happen several more times in this. I'm not sure I'm ready for it. Okay. Um... Okay. Uh, Ozpin nodded, but he had a hard time picturing Yang striking her teammates. He was well aware how close they were with each other, as well as Team Juniper. Blake, Weiss, do either of you have anything to add? Blake shook her head. No. Weiss sighed. I think someone is making her work with them. Oh, what makes you say that? Ozpin asked. I feel like that could be pretty sarcastic there, because, I mean, obviously... <laughs> what makes you say that, obviously? She's not going to do that willingly. When I was staring down Yang, I told her I wouldn't fight her. I was begging her not to do it, told her we could help her. I was getting to her, but he said something would happen if happened to her if Yang didn't do it. But his eyes shot from the floor and up to Ospin, confident in her words. She doesn't want to help him. She doesn't want to hurt us. She even told me while she was grabbing my pressure point that she was sorry. Torchwick is threatening someone close to her. He's got something on someone she loves, and she's trying to keep him quiet and save that person. Ospin nodded once again. An interesting theory. Do you have any ideas as to who it could be? Well, no, but you know, Yang. This isn't like her. There's something going on. I'll look into it. That's enough. I think that's enough for now. You should go back to your dorm and rest. Don't worry about classes or guarding the SDC. The trio nodded and walked out of the office. Ospin looked out of the window at the Emerald Forest. Maybe we were wrong about her. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, the trip to the Ruby Dorm was quiet, similar to the walk back the day before. None of them could sleep well, knowing the bed above Blake was empty, likely not to be filled again. They didn't know how to cope without Yang, without her silly puns and her loud laughter. They couldn't cope with how she turned on them. The question that ran through their heads was, why? Inside the Ruby dorm, Weiss and Blake went to sit on their respective beds while Ruby stood in the middle. They finally had their first conversation since the incident. Weiss, you think she's being forced to work with them? Weiss was surprised to hear Ruby speak to her, but she nodded nonetheless. Yes, you know it's not like her, Ruby. Do I? Ruby countered. I thought I knew my sister and everything about her, but I never thought she would lay a finger on me like she did. Blake interjected. Ruby, I agree with Weiss. I heard her before she walked over to us. She said to Torchwick, please don't make me do this. There's something going on that we don't know about. It could have been a trick, Ruby said. Yang knows you're a fauna. She could have said that to throw you off. 
Why well, stood up infuriated. How can you even think that? Yang wouldn't do anything to hurt us willingly. She loves us. He's threatening her with something. Like what? One of us? Do we actually have any dirty laundry? I mean, everyone knows about how your family's mistreatment of faunas throughout history. I'm pretty sure Osborne already knows about Blake being in the White Fang, too. What about you? Blake questioned. She could be protecting you. I don't have any secrets, Blake. I've never done anything bad, and she wouldn't need to protect us from him if it was a physical threat because we're huntresses in training. We can defend ourselves. No, there's got to be something missing. Who else could it be? Ruby, what about your mom? Ruby shook her head. My mom's dead. Weiss froze, feeling like she just kicked a puppy. Ruby, I'm sorry. Ruby shook her head once more, waving off the apology. No, that could have been it if she were alive, but... Blake could see the gears turning the smaller girl's head. What is it, Ruby? Yang's my half-sister. We have the same dad, we have different moms. Her mom left when she was young, no reason to why or anything, just gone. Then dad met my mom, and she basically raised Yang like she was her own. But Yang's always wondered about her birth mother. Maybe if Torchwick knows something about her, or has her. Wait, are you suggesting Yang turned on us for her own personal benefits? Weiss asked, disgusted. Ruby groaned, exasperated. I don't know, Weiss. I never thought she would hit me, and look what happened. She always said she was going to protect me, and here she is causing me pain. Ruby sighed, blinking the tears back. All I know is Yang's never given up looking for her mother. She wouldn't do that to us. Yang would have, would have us help her bust in and save her, Weiss argued. Blake jumped in between the two. This is all just speculation at this point anyway. We don't know anything concrete, but we can't give up on Yang without solid proof. You think I want to give up on her? Ruby spun to the faunus. Of course I don't, but look at the evidence I have. I didn't hear her say any of the things you two claim she said. Maybe it was your imagination, your ears playing tricks on you. I don't know. All I know is I've lost the only family I had left. Ruby, you haven't lost your family. You still have me and Weiss, Blake said gently. And what about your Uncle Crow? I, Ruby sighed and buried her face in her hands. You don't understand. You haven't lost family before. Both Blake and Weiss' families hardened at, one, at that one sentence. Blake was in front of Ruby in a flash. I know you're hurting right now. We are too. But don't take it out on us. You don't know about my family. You still have your dad, Crow, Yang. I lost all of them. My parents, my aunt, my twin. Are you sure about that? Uh, they're all gone. Don't tell me I haven't lost any family. The cat faunus walked out of the ruby dorm and slammed it behind her. That was not as angry or upset as it should have been. I need sleep. Uh, ruby blinked, staring after Blake feeling the guilt build up inside of her. She looked at Weiss waiting for the screaming. Weiss just shook her head with a sigh. My mom was on every station when she died. There's no way you, you could have heard. Uh, we're hurting too, Ruby. Don't take your pain out on us. We don't need that. We need each other more than ever now. With that, Weiss walked out of the room and tried to find Blake leaving Ruby alone in the dorm. <sighs> Jesus. Now that's just that's just a lot of like like sad No weird noise is happening. I don't know why. Weiss couldn't find Blake anywhere. She looked everywhere in Beacon, but didn't find her teammate anywhere. Knowing Blake would come back when she was ready, Weiss headed back to her room. On the way, she thought about what Ruby had said. Could Yang betray her team just for a mother she's never known? For one that possibly abandoned her on purpose? She couldn't believe that, but she couldn't figure out what's going on. She's protecting someone, but why and who was a mystery. It was frustrating to think her... Oh, her Yang, I forgot about that. I already forgot what ships are going on in this story. <laughs> so awful. It was frustrating to think her Yang was out there helping wreak havoc on Vale just to protect one person. She knew that if Yang came at her again, she would have to defend herself. She could subdue Yang without hurting her, and then they could bring her back to Beacon. Weiss didn't want to hurt the blonde, but she couldn't refuse to fight her again. If Ruby could go after Yang, then surely she could too. She just had to push her feelings aside like her father told her. 
If you have no personal attachment, you can get the job done easier, but would it be so easy to push the feelings aside? Weiss sighed, shaking her head. Damn it, Yang, why didn't you just tell me? Weiss cursed in her head. The heiress was so distracted, she bumped into someone as she rounded the corner. The person fell to the floor with a familiar shout. Jean? Weiss looked down at the clumsy boy. Oh, hey, Weiss. Weiss held a hand towards him. Sorry. John took her hand and got to his feet. Eh, don't worry about it. How are you guys holding up? Honestly, not good. Dang didn't do this to hurt us, though. Something's going on, John. Torchwick is threatening someone, maybe one of us, to keep her in line. John nodded. Yeah, Pierre mentioned that may be why she turned on us. It's hard to believe Yang just jumped ship like that. How's Ruby taking it? Hard. She's confused and hurt, and she's lashing out at Blake and I. She's all but given up on Yang. The thought occurred to Weiss. John, you are her first real friend here. Why don't you talk to her? I don't know, Weiss. I want to help you. I want to help, but you know I'm not good at talk. Good with talking, John said sullenly, rubbing the back of his neck. That may be just what she needs. I'm not asking you to fix her problems or anything. Just talk to her. Like I said, you were her first real friend at Beacon, when Blake and I wouldn't even give her a chance. It would mean a lot if you talked to her. John thought for a moment before he gave a slight nod. I see your point. I'll give it a try. Weiss actually managed to smile. Thank you, John. I hope you can make her feel better even if it's just a small amount. I'll do my best. I think I'll go to the training room in that case. Oh, hey, wait. Have you seen Blake? The blonde defender shook his head. Sorry, I haven't. Weiss sighed. Off to the training room, then. Uh, Weiss turned and walked down the hallway. Partway there, John called out, Weiss! Stopping, she turned and looked over her shoulder. It may be a good idea to check around your dorm room. It's possible Yang could have left something for you guys. That's a good idea. I'll look when I get back. Thanks, John. That The heiress marched off to the training area. Oh, goodness gracious. So, I said that Yang was hypnotized. That I was wrong. <laughs> she was... She was essentially blackmailed, I would assume. Something along those lines. <sighs> okay. Fuck. Where are these weird noises coming from? I worry they're coming from my mini fridge, because that probably doesn't mean anything good. They really shouldn't be, but, like, I don't know what's happening. I need to, I need to stop getting somewhere distracted. Sorry about that. Oh, God. Why didn't I fill up my water bottles? <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay. Three days passed without any word from Yang or White Fang activity. It made Weiss uneasy. She didn't like it. It's like how it was before Yang ran off to the White Fang. She still hadn't figured out who she, who she was protecting. Ruby and Blake were barely talking now. Weiss tried to make them see they need each other and apologize, but Blake refused, saying she had nothing to apologize for while Ruby was ashamed to look Blake in the eye. Weiss was tired of it, so she made a plan. She woke up before her team and waited for the others to wake. Blake woke up first, giving Weiss a good morning before slipping into the bathroom. Ruby woke up shortly after but frowned when she realized Blake was in the shower. Blake came out, saw Ruby, and made her way to the door, but Weiss blocked her path. We're not doing this anymore. You two are going to make up, Weiss said. No, we're not. Move. No, we're a team falling. We're a team and we're falling apart, right? Weiss refused, crossing her arms. We've lost Yang already. If you two keep keep it up, you'll lose each other, and I'm not going to pick sides. Don't do this. Uh, Ruby stood up and said softly, hesitantly, Blake, maybe she's right. I'm not apologizing for anything. Ruby nodded. You shouldn't have to. I, I didn't know about your family, Blake. I Blake spun around to face her. Of course you didn't. I don't want to talk about it. I have nightmares about it. I watched my family get slaughtered in front of me, and Blake was cut off as Ruby latched onto her in a tight hug. She looked 
down at the smaller girl to see tears welling up in silver eyes. I'm sorry, please don't hate me. I don't want to lose any more sisters, Ruby wailed, burying her face in Blake's chest. Blake's eyes widened at being referred to as her sister. Her anger, The anger she held seemed to dissipate as she blinked back her own tears. She slowly lifted a hand and stroked Ruby's short hair. I, Ruby, I don't hate you, but you hurt me. I know, and I'm sorry, I really am, but Blake, you shouldn't keep these things in. I know you don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about what happened to my mom either. We love you, though. You can talk to us about anything. Then that goes for you, too, Weiss smiled, watching, watching as her teammates reconciled. It was good to have them on the same page again. Maybe we should talk about our past more so we can avoid this kind of thing, she suggested. Yeah, Blake sighed, but admitted it might be best. But later, though. Weiss shook her head. Right now we have to focus on Yang. Nervy sighed. Weiss, I love my sister, but I don't know about this. Ruby, have faith in us. We have, have faith in your sister. Ruby nodded and Weiss continued. Ruby, you've known Yang the longest. If she were going to hide a clue for you to find in the room, where would it be? Uh, the red-clad girl gave the heiress an odd look. Uh, why? Well, what if Yang left a clue for us to try to explain this? I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything. Ruby walked over to Yang's bed and reached into the pillow. She pulled her hand out and looked down at it. A picture of Weiss and Yang? She keeps a picture of us under her pillow, Weiss asked, shocked. Blake muttered, apparently. Ruby flipped the picture over. Hey, there's something on the back. It's just a bunch of words. Malachite. Twelve on the twelfth. Back up. Or back up, I guess. I, I said it a little weird. What does that mean, Blake questioned. The only thing Malachite brings to mind is the Malachite twins. Milsha and Melanie, Ruby said. The bodyguards at Junior Club. The club where she beat everyone up just for information, Weiss asked. Ruby nodded. Yep. Yep. She popped the P as she looked back down at the paper. But I don't understand the rest of it. Blake stepped forward and peeked over Ruby's shoulder. Twelve on the twelfth could be a date and time. What's today? The tenth? It could be on the tw on on the twelve, on the twelfth at twelve o'clock. Backup either means she needs backup or we should bring backup. Blake's blue eyes widened. I got it. The alabaster-haired girl ran from the room. Came back a minute later with Juniper. Um, hello again, Pierre said with a smile as she walked over to Blake. The rest of Juniper as well as Ruby were quite confused. Sean decided to ask, Weiss, what's so important you ran us over here? Yang needs us, Weiss announced. Pardon? She left a she, she left a clue, Weiss gestured to the photo in Ruby's hand. She wants us to go to Junior's Club on the 12th at 12 o'clock, since clubs usually open at night, I'm assuming it's p.m. What if it's a trap? Jean asked. That's why you're going to be our backup. If something goes wrong, you come in and save our butts, Weiss said. I think we need a better plan than that, Nora, Nora shouted gleefully. We'll break their legs. I think we need, we need more details than that, Nora, Ren said. Look, if you guys don't want to help, then I understand, but I refuse to believe Yang's turned on us. We have to help her, Weiss said. You're right, Ruby said. I don't know what I was thinking. Yang's always been there for me. Now it's my turn. I have a plan. John, you guys in? John grinned. Of course. What's the plan? It was a significantly shorter chapter than the last one. Chapter 9. I don't know if I announced it was chapter 8, but I mean... If you're not going to read this, read the chapter. Ugh. Read what chapter it is. Okay. Uh, Blake looked up at the club sign with a concerned look. Are we sure this is a good idea? I shook her head. No, but this is the best lead we have. Remember the plan, Ruby asked. Juniper's in the alleys across the street, wait, watching for anyone suspicious outside to come in. If someone shows up, they'll sneak in after them, Weiss said. Blake picked up where the heiress left off. You and Weiss will go talk to the twins while I blend in with the crowd and keep an eye on everyone. If I see someone, I'll tell you via our earpieces, Blake said, tapping her own earbud. Uh, Ruby smiled. Good, let's go. 
Ruby all but ran to the doors. I don't think you're going don't think you're going to drink alcohol, Ruby, Weiss said. Ruby pouted, Weiss? No. The trio was surprised the bouncer let them in easily with all the trouble Yang is, has had getting in. One quick look around the room showed some dancers on the floor, a couple of people at the bar being served by Junior, and the twins talking at the bar near Junior. Blake swooped away from her teammates and into the crowd. Weiss didn't like clubs at all. There were too many people in such a crowded area, and that made her uneasy. In a fight, it was different, but when there was no action, she couldn't stand it. After dealing with her father on more than a few nights, Weiss also didn't like drunks, which usually littered a club. That's fair. Uh, she pushed away the uneasy feeling and followed Ruby towards the bar. They approached the twins, though Weiss wasn't sure who they were. They were wearing a red dress and a white dress, respectively, quietly talking to themselves. Weird coincidence, they have the same colors as Ruby and I, Weiss. As Ruby and I, Weiss thought to herself. Uh, Ruby stepped to the bar. Uh, are you the Malachite twins? The one wearing white gave her a sneer. Aren't you a little young to be in here? I'm not here to drink. I need to speak with you. The white-clad twin was bitchy. Weiss could see it in her eyes, her demeanor. Though she may be like that because her life isn't the best. Weiss wasn't sure and she wasn't going to judge, unless she upset Ruby. The red twin seemed to shift back away from them, as if she was shy. Weiss quickly assumed that the white twin did most of the talking. That's racist. I'm just kidding. That's... Maybe indeed. <sighs> I need to stop saying things that have not a single thing to do with what I'm looking at here. <sighs> okay. She stepped up next to Ruby. Look, we know you talk to Yang Zhao Long. We need to know what you know. The twin opened her mouth to speak, but the red twin cut her off. Melanie, wait. These must be your teammates, Ruby Rose and Wei Shini. Melanie looked at Weiss curiously. Thought she looked familiar. Nosha, are you sure? Yes, I watched them when they came in. They were with another girl wearing a bow, Yang's partner. I remembered she was so excited about dating Wei Shini and showed us that picture of her team. That's them. Weiss frowned. You seem to you seem like you know Yang well. Nilsha nodded. We do. At first we didn't like her, but the more she came in, the more we started to talk. We're friends. Sometimes we help her train, Melanie said. What are you wanting to know? We need to know why she turned on us, Ruby said. She's helping Torchwick and the White Fang. We found a note that said to come here and your name was on it. Um uh, the twins' eye, the twins' eyes widened slightly as they spoke in tandem. What? I know it's not like her, but that's why we, th why we think he's forcing her to help him. He said if she doesn't help him, then something will happen to her, but we don't know who that is. Why? Why said? Well, Melody paused at. But at the nod from her sister, she went on. Yang would come in here a lot, looking for information about her mother. Summer Rose? Ruby asked quietly. The white-clad twin shook her head. No, her birth mother. We couldn't help her, though, but Junior gave her a clue once. Maybe Torchwick knows something. Didn't Junior let Torchwick hire his goons? Weiss questioned, crossing her arms. Do you work for him? No, we work for Junior. Junior hires his goons, as you say, out to anyone who pays enough. All he cares about is money. Melanie sighed before looking into light blue eyes. Look, Weiss, we care about Yang. If we knew why she was doing this, we would tell you, honestly. If she needs our help, then you call us. We'll come help. Uh, thanks, Weiss said, somewhat shocked. Actually, Milsha spoke up. I saw Torchwick in here the other day. She, he said he'd come back today. If you wait around, you might see him. Ruby, they're here. Torchwick just walked in with Neo. A few White Fang members, Yang and... Oh my god. Blake's voice dropped towards the end. Blake, Blake, what is it? Ruby questioned, getting an odd look from the twins until he spotted the earbud. Adam, my old partner. He's here. He's strong, Ruby. I'm not confident that we can take him. Ruby could have sworn she heard fear in her teammate's voice. Ruby looked at the twins. He's here. You're going to help us now? The twins shared a glance before nodding. Anything for Yang? We've got another team outside. They should follow Torchwick in. Let's go confront them. Uh, 
Blake met Ruby Weiss and the twins on the dance floor. The five of them marched to the middle of the floor, cutting off Torchwick and his goons. Yang's eyes widened when she saw them, and then went wider when she saw the Malachites with them. Ah, Red, what a surprise meeting you here, Torchwick said with a smile. Adam looked at his former partner, Blake. Adam? Blake sneered. Now, Torchwick smirked. I see you already know Kitty, Adam. She's my former partner in the White Fang. Help me take a shipment off a Schnee train before she quit on us. Adam glared at the cat faunus. Weiss froze and spun to look at her teammate. You attacked my family's train? It was before I knew you, Weiss. I saved those workers from Adam. He was going to murder them. They weren't even in the way. They deserve it. They mistreat us, Adam snapped. That's not the way to get respect, Blake countered. You're not helping our cause. You're making it worse. As fascinating as this is, we have business to attend to. Torchwick interrupted. We're here for Yang, Ruby snapped, pulling out Crescent Rose. <laughs> Torchwick laughed. Oh, you poor girl. I'm not keeping her here. She chose to join me. Lyra, my sister would never betray us. Yang, Torchwick looked, at the, looked to the blonde. Go take out your sister. Uh, conflict flooded Yang's eyes before she activated Ember Celica. I, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's Cecilia. Anyways, uh, Ruby's eyes widen. I'm not fighting you, Yang. We shouldn't do this. We'll help you just come back to us. Yang blasted her shotguns behind her and flew towards Ruby. The red crow froze in her spot. Just before Yang's fist connected, a glyph blocked her path. Yang turned to see Weiss pointing Mirjanaster at her. I don't want to hurt you, but this time I won't back down. At, the, at that time, Juniper jumped the various white fang members from behind. Jean, Ren, and Nora went after the grunts, while Pierre took on Neo. Blake used the distraction to fly Adam, while Ruby and the twins jumped towards Torchwick. Weiss stared down her girlfriend. Stand down, Yang. We want to help you. You can't help me. You don't understand, Weiss. I have to do this, Yang snapped. She charged her girlfriend, fist pulled back. Uh, White spun the revolver chamber. You keep saying that I, that, but I don't, un but I don't understand. You're right. You haven't told me why. White slammed the rapier to the ground. A sheet of ice covering the ground around her. Yang didn't see it coming and lost her footing, sliding on the ice. She managed to get her bearing and continued to charge. Now sliding towards I Weiss. The revolver chamber spun as Weiss aimed the sword. Fire blasted from the tip and melted part of the ice right where Yang was heading. The sudden lack of ice to slide on caused the girl to fall forward. Weiss used her glyph and aimed it under Yang, trapping her in place. Wait here. As Weiss ran off to find her friends, Yang muttered, I should have seen that one coming. Blake slashed at Adam, swinging Gamble Shroud harder than she normally would. She knew she couldn't hold back. She had to fight with everything she had. The bull managed to block the attacks with his sheath sheath. God, I can't speak. Before he countered, swinging his blade from the sheath. Blake took a sh used a shadow to quickly jump back out of the way. Adam sw slid the sword back into the sheath. You can still come back to us, Blake, he said. I'd rather die, Blake stared him down. That's how you want it. Adam charged at Blake. Uh, Blake prepared to defend herself, but a white figure flew past her and a blade flew out. A drop of blood fell from the small cut on Adam's face. Weiss stood behind him and her blade trained him. You okay, Blake? Yeah, where's Yang? She's tied up at the moment. Um, Adam spun around, blade slashing at Weiss. She deflected the attack with her rapier. Blake started to go to her aid, but hit the ground when a body slammed into her. She crashed to the floor, head spinning as it cracked against the floor. Her, as her vision came together, she saw Pira sitting up. Pira? The redhead stood up and blocked an umbrella with Akuo. Uh, Blake jumped up to help her. Pira smacked Neo in the face with Akuo, knocking the multicolored girl back. Uh, she threw the shield, bashing Neo in the face. A gloved hand snatched Akuo from the air and slammed it to the ground. Yang put her knees on the shield and held it down. Pura, Pura? Pira furrowed her eyebrows as she activated her semblance. She attempted to pull the shield back to her, but Yang was strong. Pira dropped Milo in her attempt to pull the shield back. Yang, Pira managed to speak, gritting her teeth as she did. I don't know why you're doing this, but we're your friends. I know, Yang said quietly, not looking the girl in the eyes. Blake spotted Neo coming at Pierre and jumped to her defense, deflecting the umbrella. Neo gave her that cocky smile as the blade popped out of the top of her umbrella. The two exchanged blow for blow, keeping up with each other. That is until Adam joined the fight and attacked with Neo. 
Pierre stopped Weiss helping. Oh, Pierre spotted Weiss helping. Oh, God. <laughs> my, oh, God, my brain doesn't like this. Oh, it's confusing me. Okay, Pierre spotted Weiss helping Ruby with Torchwick. The rest of her team fighting Junior. And Milsha face down on the ground with her sister by her side checking on her. Uh, she saw Blake fighting Neo and Adam and starting to lose. Adam knocked Gamble Shroud from her grip. Pierre looked at her, a shield under Yang, before breaking her semblance and sprinting to Blake. Blake watched her sword skid along the ground. She turned back just in time to catch Neo's umbrella across her temple. Her vision went blurry, but she didn't see Adam and Neo go for the finishing blow. I don't think that's a that's a point where you use but because I mean it's okay. Uh, something wet splashed on her face. Blake wiped her eyes. Surprised, they were covered in blood when she pulled them away. She looked up to find why her opponent stopped their attack and gasped in horror. Pierre stood in front of her, two separate blades buried in her chest. Neo's dagger was awfully close to her heart. Pira, the blades retracted and the gladiator's knees gave out. Blake caught her and lowered her to the floor. Uh, Pierre, talk to me. Pierre was losing blood fast. Blake could see the life fading from green eyes. No, no, no. Come on, stay with me. She had to heal her and fast, but... Her own aura was low, and she never learned to heal with her aura. Ren, Ren, get over here. He's not going to make it, Pierre said quietly. He has his own trouble. Uh, Blake shook her head. Save your strength. You'll be okay. Blake, Blake, I love you. Don't say it like that. You'll be okay, Blake sniffed, wiping her eyes on her sleeves, her hands covered in blood. Just... Pierre interrupted. Just say it back, kitten. Please. She let out a shaky breath. I love you. I love you, Pierre. Please don't leave me. Please. Take care of Jean for me. And don't don't pull away from our friends. Pierre. Pierre gave her a small smile before using the last of her strength to lean up and capture Blake's lips on her in her own. She pulled away all too soon and whispered, I'll watch after you, Pierre exhaled for the final time as her eyes shut, her head falling back. Oh, goodness. Blake shattered, breaking into sobs. She forgot about the battle. The enemies just feet away from her, ready to strike her down. She had one thought going through her mind. Pierre was dead. She lost her, just like she's lost. she lost her family so long ago. Physically, there wasn't a blade in her chest, but emotionally, the blade had just shredded her heart into a thousand pieces. Pierre was gone, taken away from her. She lost the love of her life, taken away by her former partner. Anger filled her mind now. Adam, he had been... Her trusted friend for years, but the White Fang changed him, twisted him. Now he, along with that bitch Neo, had taken away her gladiator. She had to have revenge. Blake knew she had to avenge Pierre, right here, right now. Uh, Blake gently laid Pierre's body on the floor and looked up. Aqua was on the ground in front of her. She was sure that wasn't there before, but nonetheless she snatched it up and strapped her ribbon to it. Looking up, she saw Adam and Neo had not moved, but Neo's jaw was at an odd angle, as if it was broken. Her left cheek was also purple, obviously bruised. She clutched it, eyes filled with pain. Pierre's spear was jutting out of Adam's leg. Jesus. Uh, Blake jumped to her feet and roughly pulled the spear out of his leg. Adam shouted in pain and stared at her. Rage-filled amber eyes stared at him. Adam swung his sword from the sheath once more. Blake deflected the attack with Aquil and forced Milo downwards. The spear drove through Adam's Achilles tendon. Jesus. As he dropped to the ground, crying out in pain, Blake adjusted her grip on Milo as it shifted to the short sword. Blake viciously stabbed the tendon on the other foot, grinning when Adam shouted. Jesus. Hearing the footsteps approaching, Blake threw Aquil, smashing the shield against Neo's face. She cried out as her broken jaw caused her even... It caused her more pain from the impact. Blake tugged on the ribbon and Aqua flew back into her hand. Blake drove Milo's blade into the bull's chest and unrelentingly turned the blade. She pulled the blade free and plunged the blade down, stabbing in the heart. Jesus. With Adam dead, Blake turned towards Neo. Pink and brown eyes flew open in terror. Blake spun Milo around and fired the rifle straight at the girl. Bullets riddled Neo's stomach, shoulder, and arm before she shattered, escaping thanks to her semblance. Blake screamed in rage, Get back here, you bitch! Torchwick 
Having witnessed these events, called a retreat and the White Fang quickly ran from the building. Seeing Blaine take Blake take down one of the strongest members of the White Fang so easily made him uneasy. His no rule was, if you don't think you can win, retreat and try again another day. This was one of those days. Sean was the first to see the body. Pira! The worry and fear in his voice got everyone's attention. The group quickly ran over to their friend. Blake was still fuming, shrieking at the long-gone Neo and cursing Adam to hell and back. Uh... Uh, Weiss ran up to her teammate as Juniper dropped next to Pira. Blake, Blake, damn it, Blake, what the hell just happened? Blake finally registered Weiss was in front of her. What do you think happened? Adam and Neo killed Pira. She jumped in front of me. She shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't. The Faunus was starting to settle down again. Ruby silently walked to Blake and wrapped her arms around her waist. Milo dropped to the ground as Weiss joined Ruby, wrapping her arms around the girl and softly stroking her hair. Blake broke down in her teammate's arms, sobbing into Weiss's shoulder. Goodness gracious. <laughs> and there's that major character death. Oh, God. Anyways, um... <laughs> hope you like the Blake and Pira story. <laughs> oh. Jesus. Okay. So that'll be it for today. Um... Not really leaving it at the cliffhanger because, wow, <laughs> is probably the most violent and visceral uh, fan fiction I've read in a very long time, <laughs> and it was a few paragraphs, not even just a couple. Um, Oh my goodness. Um, so that's going to have to be the end of this for today. Um, next time we'll come back and do probably three more chapters. I hope we can get that done and then we will just have, then we'll just have, you know, after once, you know, next episode, then another episode after that to finish up this story, which, you know, it's, it's actually been completed. So, you know, I won't have to worry about coming back to it because I, I don't. Actually, there is a little bit of a cliffhanger, because what happened to Yang? Oh, God. I don't even know what to say at this point. Clearly, life is in a fairy tale. Jesus. This is why I read fairy tale fan fictions. <laughs> like, actually. <laughs> like, tale as in T A I L. <laughs> Ugh. I have, I have my Gaggio pop figure right here. <laughs> Ugh. I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> I, think, I think it just has to be it. Like, we've gone on for long enough. Um, uh, I don't know exactly how long the, uh, these three fan fictions are, because I literally haven't looked at them in six months. I obviously also, I also haven't started them, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we'll see how long these are. Uh, next episode could be, or next fan fiction reading could be another episode of this, or it could be this, or it could even be that, who, who knows? Uh, although, I think, I'm pretty sure they're, actually, I don't, I think, I, I mean, I could just look, but I believe there's, man, do I not know? <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyways, um, yeah, I need to end my videos. <laughs> I wouldn't say, um, yeah, I don't know, just stick around, watch more videos, hang out, you know, help the people.
It's a good idea. Do it. Look at all that. It's quality. Anyways. Uh, that, that'll be the end. Like, actually, now. If I can stop waffling and just, you know, end my video already.